Welcome to Startup Health Now, the weekly webcast that celebrates the healthcare transformers and change makers reimagining healthcare. My name is Unity Stokes, and I'm here today at the Health 2.0 conference in Santa Clara, and we have a conversation with the CEO of Health 2.0, Indu Sabaya. Stick around, it's going to be a great show. It is the duty of leaders to lead, of the creative to create, of the daring to do. The free world expects leadership of us. Its fate and our fate depends upon our leadership. We are industrious, inventive, restless, with the fires that burn within us. Well, I say that nothing is easy, and the best things are the hardest. And all our troubles, all our immense difficulties, now and in the future, can I say, be solved if we have the will, the courage. The future is to those who take those who take All right, so we are here with Indu at Health 2 Congratulations, your ninth year. So incredible. It is exciting. We can't believe it. Yeah. Um, so what you know what what has stood out to you this year? Um, we're I know we're only halfway into Health Two O so far, but there's already been uh, amazing people here. Chelsea Clinton. Uh, the Surgeon Generals here. Um, what's exciting you this year, and what are you? What are some of the highlights so far? Yeah, I mean, I think you hit on two of them right there. Um, what is amazing to me is is how the conversation this year at the conference has shifted away from specific point innovations to really what I think is becoming a change in. Um, the way we think about health and healthcare in this country and the integration of this. And so let me give you a few examples. Um, we showed a couple of care coordination tools on that first panel that Matthew moderated on the patient experience. Right. And I was amazed. A year ago, they would have been showing really cool you know, software to look at data at, at patients in hospitals or something around um, how we connect care providers and care teams. What was unique this time was both of those integrated to the EMR seamlessly um, and without a lot of fuss. And I think that, um, on the one hand, you might think, well, well you know, isn't that just a technical thing? It really isn't because I think that's been such a roadblock for this sector. How did they actually integrate with those legacy systems that have kind of been the enemy all of these years? And I began to see that this year more than ever. So uh, integrations with the Cerners and the Allscripts and right. even now the Epics, you know, maybe we're just at the beginning. So are we sort of at the, the end of the beginning, if you will, this first nine years yeah. seems like um, – a lot has happened, but where it's maybe a new phase is beginning. There, I, there might be because Jeff Arnold, right, talked about the direction his company is going in. This, you know, began as a content company. This was about, you know, question and answers to consumers, and kind of uh, he came out of WebMD, so you know, maybe I was thinking it was going to be more of that model. But he's doing work with three thousand hospitals, right. with the Department of Defense, with the American Hospital Association. So I think. That's telling the story of, of a new chapter. I do think that you're right about that. That, um, you know, this started off as sort of like a very progressive fringe movement. And now the, the question that I asked in my talk was, is this going to be an impetus for the evolution of our existing systems or will it continue and grow as its own industry? I think the audience voted 50-50 on both of those questions uh, as a prediction. So we'll see. What's your, what are your thoughts on that? You know. Before coming to Health 2.0 this time around, I think I would have voted for it being its own industry, generating its own economy, its own meaning, um, really kind of becoming the way the way Google sort of disrupted everything. It was it's not just sort of a means to search; it became its own world. Amazon is not just a means to buy books; it became its own sort of universe. Um, but after today, um, just being here for the first day yesterday. My eyes were opened a little bit to the pace of adoption by, by the big players and how they seem to be seeing these companies not just as nice-to-haves but as must-haves in their arsenal as they compete. Um, and it's going to be where the money goes, you know, for better or for worse. We can say uh, all we want about wanting to do the right thing. But from an economy standpoint, I think policy has set this up so that today large systems have to incorporate these technologies. They have to play well with them or they're not going to be able to do what they're supposed to do in order to stay relevant. Mm. So I think that um, has made for for this story of uh, incorporation um, feel a lot more real to me now. So what, what would your advice be to, to industry? And let's break that down to maybe 
the established healthcare industry players, right. and then also the emerging companies, the startups, the ecosystem that's right. coming and in, inventing new new things. What would your advice be to them and things that they should be paying attention to? Sure. I think now more than ever, the number of potential partners a young company has, even as early as, you know, out the gate is more than ever. And I would advise people to not just look at the, the usual suspects in terms of who your customers are going to be. Um, so let me give an example. You know, we showed a um, wearable uh, sock with sensors in it last year that you might think, well, that's, you know, probably going to go the way of apparel. But they're now partnering with physical rehab and looking at medical devices and how to put these things into orthotics mm -hmm. and um, actually have it be reimbursed by, by Medicare. And on the flip side, there are things that started out in the sort of medical world that now might be uh, distributed by a Walgreens uh, and, and a CVS down the block, et cetera. So I would say to a startup today, think of almost any you know, large distribution vehicle as a potential partner for what you do. So because consumer companies as well as healthcare companies. Exactly. And, and though that line is blurring. Later today, I'm going to be talking with Comcast, you know, telephony, television, cable. They're working with Kaiser. Mm. And they're open to this new ecosystem now. So and I, I saw would Under say, Armour's here as well. Of course, Under Armour bought um, at my um, my fitness pal. Um, they were both on they stage last year. Bought one of our year. companies too, Gritness. Oh, wonderful! Yeah. Exactly. And the future of, of apparel is all about kind of health now. So I would say health is everywhere. Health is relevant to everybody's business. Yeah. And to me, that's the that's a really exciting message for an entrepreneur today. And people kind of want to work with you. And I think the second message for entrepreneurs is, as ever, we've been saying global. But now, as to your point about who's in the, in the room today, huge contingents from Europe, from Asia, um, this is going to have relevance in so many parts of the world. And that you don't just have to think, well, uh, if I'm going to go to Asia, I need to be working, you know, on a developing uh, country type technology. Um, there are stakeholders around the world now that want to adopt across the spectrum. So that would be my advice. One of the things I love about uh, you guys bringing everyone together from around the world is this opportunity for cross-pollination. And we at Startup Health, we see this as being very, very important because we're seeing, for example, the business models around consumer health being more advanced in, in India. Mm -hmm. Great technologies coming out of Israel that needs more of a market mixed mm -hmm. with uh, things that are happening throughout Europe, for example. And you bring them all together and it's very amazing to see what starts to emerge Right. 12, 18 months later. Right. And that, and this is, I mean, you know, we've known you guys since the very right. first Health 2.0 conference. And this is absolutely a story of a journey, you know. And I think the beauty of being in the space together, all of us, is you get to see, you know, the measure of success is not just one year, um, you know, what happened this year or that quarter. It's really about, you know, where have we come over the last, you know, five years. And, and you see people move through entirely new phases, uh, you know, at different companies, in different starting new companies. And that's the beauty of it. And I think to the cross-pollination point, absolutely, uh, it is that sort of conversation you have in the hallway in some ways that's more important than right. you know, the person you think you're supposed to meet when you're here. Um, and so we love that aspect of it too. So what surprised you most over the, the nine years of, of building this ecosystem? Right. Well, one, I would say uh, that the AMA is here, okay. <laughs> which is, uh, you know, has had a reputation for being you know, a pretty, uh, you know, conservative organization in a certain way um, and upholding the principles of medicine, and medical education, et cetera, to have them be at uh, Health 2.0, to have them run a, a developer competition and really open up to the space. I think that's a big surprise. You know, I come from uh, the former medical world um, and was sort of fleeing it at the time because I thought of it as a little bit restrictive, to be honest. And so it's wonderful to see kind of uh, the AMA here. Uh, I think similarly, you know, we mentioned this earlier, but the sort of non-traditional health players being at the table, um, the Comcast of the world, the Under Armors, the retailers, that isn't so much of a surprise, but I think that 
that sort of presence is going to open up so many new channels for this industry. So that's wonderful to see. And I have to say, this also wasn't a surprise, but it was such a pleasure to hear the Surgeon General today really talk about prevention. Mm -hmm. And everybody in the room, and you guys and we, um, we've been saying this for so long. When are we going to move to this culture of prevention? When is technology going to help us avoid the downstream you know, disasters? And how do we live, um, live well? And I thought hearing that kind of coming from a place where it can really have huge impact was wonderful. And, and I think Chelsea spoke to some of those right. same types of principles. And so I'm really encouraged to see how there's such a connection between, I think, what the grassroots has been trying to do all these years, and now really the... the it's beyond grassroots at this point. It's beyond grassroots, and there's, there's a familiarity and a common language. Right. Um, so you might say, well, then does it mean that, you know, we're not being edgy enough? Are we just now sort of all folded into, like, the machine? Uh, so so what, are your, what are your predictions then? Where does right. this go? That's right. Well, I personally, because I, I don't do this because I'm trying to run, you know, a corporate conference. I mean, it's not going to be fun for me if all, right. we're all just singing the uh, mantras of the establishment. That's not why Health 2.0 got started. So I'm going to look for those areas that are still cutting edge, right? Um, I'm going to look for uh, the future of the life sciences coming together with biological science and what that means for IT. It seems like it's mer that's merging as that's well with digital frontier. health and it's all coming together. Exactly. I think we're just at the earliest stages of um, where you know, feels like uh, genomics and proteomics and all of those very, very heavy duty science subjects need to come into contact with this world. Um, that's a new frontier. I think this world of uh, AI, mm. robotics, you know, algorithmic intelligence, that's a really wonderful and exciting frontier. So I think we're going to see pushing the limits, you know, even of where we are today um, and continuing to evolve things like 3D printing and uh, drone technology, even if it's really a little far out still. Yeah. Um, you know, we need something that's a little visionary to keep us going. Yeah. Others we're going to become hymns. Right. Well, no, <laughs> you guys will. <laughs> you guys are always on the cutting edge. So a few fun questions yeah. just to wrap up here. Um, so do you have any favorite books that you find yourself recommending often either to people in the industry or entrepreneurs or um, healthcare innovators? That's and it doesn't have to be a healthcare book or a, right, a startup right. book. Wow, that's a really, really good question. Um, you know, I or it could be a blog, it could be <laughs> podcast. The Startup Health Podcast, oh. I hear. <laughs> and that, that guy, Unity, he's such a great, he's the new Charlie Rose. Right. Um, you know, I, uh, it's really interesting. I've been reading a lot of memoir lately. Oh. Um, and I find that, you know, I, I don't, tend to read a lot of sort of healthcare industry books, partly because I think I work so much in it. Sometimes right. it's nice to sort of go outside of that. But um, I think what's really interesting in thinking about people's life stories, um, and I just read the Maggie Nelson memoir about, you know, motherhood, um, about how society is changing. Um, you know, I've read the, the Lena Dunham memoir, mm -hmm. um, and I think about uh, how you tell your life story. Uh, in whatever field you are, actually has an impact on your life. And that's something that I find fascinating. So just think about that. How we learn to tell the story about our lives affects our lives. Do you ever think about how you would tell your future story? Right. Well, that's part of it, right? Because what is the next chapter? Right. You know, what is what is my journey? And I think um, what you guys do in some ways in the community you're building and what we're doing is um, kind of telling the story mm. of this industry. And people need that as much as they need, you know, the mechanical support. Right. And I think that's something I've been thinking a lot about. And in reading sort of the life stories of individuals, I'm thinking about how that feeds into, you know, the stories of movements. I and love that. So, yeah. And different question, but what do you do personally to stay healthy and, and well? Right. Well, um, that's a good question. Uh, I'm a mom and you're now a dad and yeah. <laughs> it's a challenge <laughs> with being busy um, and active. But um, I just started wearing this. Um, okay. So this is uh, the Fitbit Charge HR. And this is after doing Health 2.0 for years. I kind of never was into a wearable, but I thought I would try it. Um, and I really like looking at the heart rate side of it. And um, 
I just have been meditating for over a year and a half okay. now. Do you use so an app for that? I do. Or? I use Headspace. Yeah, full I use on uh, devotee of uh, uh, Andy Puttycomb. His however voice is so soothing. I know. <laughs> I know. He is. He's amazing. Um, I'm a fan. And I think meditation being part of my life, yoga has always been a part of my life. Um, but now being able to sort of monitor the impact of the mind body uh, interaction, my stress levels, you know, um, that has been really, really powerful to me. So I think I wasn't so much like a steps tracker. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit like that wasn't speaking to me. But the moment we began to offer people like me a, a window into that mind body connection, it's like that's what, that's what hooked me. And I think I'm looking forward to more technologies that kind of speak to that part of health. Um, because to me, I see these things as so connected. So Wonderful. Well, where can people learn more about you, learn more about Health 2.0, right. well, get involved? Um, you know, follow Health 2.0 at Health2Con. Uh, that's our Twitter handle. Um, I don't tweet as often as I should. Uh, but, but you have I'm a cool tw Twitter handle. <laughs> at Blue Topaz. Uh, I know. Uh, I didn't really think that one through. I think it was one of those whimsical ideas in, you know, 2006, and then yeah. it stuck. But, um, yeah, and I think uh, just... Google Health 2.0, we're probably coming and to a city near you. all over the world you. That's right, yeah. yeah. And if there's anything that you think um, you're not seeing out there, and I know, you know, people interact with you and your network, uh, but, you know, that's how we learn. Yeah. People come to us with ideas. People come to us with unmet needs. Um, what aren't we paying attention to? What needs attention? Um, you know, use Health 2.0 as a platform because uh, that's what we're there for. Wonderful. Well, congratulations again. It's wonderful to see how this has grown and, and how much it's done for the whole ecosystem. So thank you. Thank you so much. And also for the work you and Steve do. Wonderful. Thank you.